All right. We are in section 11.2, where we are going to find the areas of trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites. 11.1, um, we looked at triangles and parallelograms. Uh, for these three, just like yesterday, uh, they have uh, distinct formulas that we have to use in order to find a particular area. Uh, first thing for trapezoids, one of the characteristics was it had exactly one pair of parallel sides. And the area for the trapezoid is going to be one half, um, one half times it by the height which is the height is always going to be perpendicular to those um, parallel sides, and then the sum of the two bases, so base 1 plus base 2. If you look at the next a shape, which is a rhombus, we looked when we talked about a rhombus in um, chapter 10, we said that the characteristics were that you had to have all the sides to be congruent, and what we're going to take a look at is the length of each of the diagonals. So area of a rhombus is going to be one half times it by the product of the two diagonals. So diagonal one times it by diagonal two. And finally, uh, we have the area of a kite. Kite characteristics was you had two consecutive congruent sides. So these two were congruent, their consecutive sides, and then these two sides were also uh, congruent. What made what makes these interesting is they have the same uh, formula as the area of a rhombus. The reason for that is if you remember, both of these intersect the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. So that is why you can use the same formula for the area of a kite and the area of a rhombus. So if we look at some examples, the first thing you have to identify is, especially in this case, is, is it a trapezoid, is it a rhombus, or is it a kite? If you look here, you have this 90 degree angle. It has the 90 degree angle. These two sides are parallel, so that means that we have a trapezoid. So we're going to use the trapezoid formula, which is 1 half times by the height and then it's going to be the sum of the two bases. So I go over here, I got one half. The height happens to be four. So even though it's one of the side lengths, it would say right angled side length. And the sum of the two heights, one or sum of the two bases, I'm sorry, one base is six, the other base is eight. So using order of operation, I got one half times it by 4, times it by the sum of 6 plus 8, which is 14. 1 half times it by 4, times it by 14. That gives me an area of 28 square units. Okay, looking at the next example here. Um, since I have uh, two pairs of consecutive congruent angles, we have a kite. The kites formula from the first page is one half diagonal one times it by diagonal two. So diagonal one, so it's gonna be one half diagonal one is looks like it's fourteen, so it's the length of the entire diagonal, and I have a diagonal of six, and so we just simply multiply all three of those numbers together. One half times fourteen times six gives us a value of forty-two square units. And moving along, I have this shape right here. Uh, this shape has um, four congruent sides. Four congruent sides gives us the characteristic of a rhombus. Uh, it is the same formula as the kite, so one half diagonal one times by diagonal two. But we also were only given a portion of the diagonal. So from here to here is 30, and from here to here is uh, 40. But 
we remember that the diagonals, when they intersect, that 40 is also going to be translated over onto this side. And same thing goes for the 30. It's going to be translated over here on the other side of the diagonal. So that means that diagonal 1 is, is essentially 40 plus 40. So it's going to be 1 half times it by 80 times it by 30 plus 30, which is 60. So then we multiply all three of those terms together. So 1 half times it by 80 times it by 60 gives us an area of... 2,400 square units. And looking at the last shape on the screen, uh, we are given a trapezoid, a uh, height, which is 5.8, base, which is 6, and another base, which is uh, 3.6. So to find the area of this, I'm going to go 1 half. Height is 5.8 because it's perpendicular to our two parallel sides, and then it's going to be the sum of the two bases. So it's 3.6 plus 6. So or of operation says we have to take care of the, the sum of the two bases. 3.6 plus 6 is 9.6. And then we just add, or not add, multiply those three terms together. 1 half times 5.8 times 9.6 gives me 27. 0.84 square units. Okay, let's look at this word problem. So it says draw and label a diagram. So it says let x be the length of one diagonal. The other diagonal is twice as long. If the figure is a kite, and has an area of 72.25, find the values of the diagonal. So it says it's a kite, so I'm just going to draw a kite like so. So I'm going to say this. So these two angles are congruent, and the other two... Um, not angles, the other two sides are congruent. So these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent. Okay. Now we have to look at the diagonals. So I'm going to go over here. I have a diagonal right here and I have a diagonal right here. They're saying that one diagonal is twice as long as the other. So we'll say that this is going to be X. We don't know what it is and we're going to say the other length of the diagonal, which is twice it, it's going to be two times x, whatever that happens to be. So they're telling us the area is 72.25. All right, so we know it's a kite. So it's one half times by diagonal one times by diagonal two. So area, which is 72.25 in this case, is going to be equal to one half times it by diagonal one, which we'll call it x, times by diagonal two, which we'll call it 2x. So I got 72.25 can be equal to, if I multiply all three of those terms, one half times by x times by 2x, that's going to give me 1x squared. Then to just define the value of x, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So x is going to be equal to the square root of 72.25, which is equal to 8.5. Okay, so we found what x is. x is 8.5. The question was they wanted us to find the values of the diagonal. So that means we had to find both of them. So, so we'll say that d1 is 8.5, and diagonal 2 is going to be 2 times 8.5, which is 17. Okay? Last examples that we have is you're trying to find the value of x. So the first shape they give us is a trapezoid. So in this particular instance, they want us to find the value of the height, which is x. So I go over here and use the formula to help us out. So it's going to be 165, which is the area. It's going to be equal to 1 half 
times it by the height, which is x, times it by the sum of the two bases, which is 12 plus 21. Okay, so I look at this and say, all right, I really want to get rid of this fraction one half. So what I'm going to do to get rid of it is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1, or just 2. So this this gets canceled out on the 1 half on the right-hand side. And then 2 times 165 is going to give me a value of 330, which is going to equal x times by the sum of 12 plus 21. Well, 12 plus 21 is going to give me a value of 33. So I got 330 equals 33x. Then to find the value of x, I simply divide each side by 33, which means x is going to equal 10. And then finally, we have a rhombus on the right-hand side with an area of 72. And what they give us is length of one diagonal, which is 16. And then we want to find the value of x, which is from here to here. But what is the value of this entire diagonal? So if we know that this value here is x, we also know that this value right here is also x. So we know that the diagonal area, or I'm sorry, the area of our rhombus is diag one half diagonal one times by diagonal two. So area is 72, which is going to equal one half diagonal one, we'll call it 16. And then diagonal 2 is going to be x plus x, which is 2x. So 72 is over here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'm going to multiply uh, those three terms. So 1 half times 16 times 2x gives us 16x. And then we simply divide 16 to both sides, which means x is going to give us 4.5. All right, and that is being able to find the area of trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites. I hope this helps. Until next time.